All right, so this video, um, I already created this miscellaneous string operations program, but I want to go through each of the four methods with you because these are kind of, when working with string programs, these are all the different uh, um, methods that you would use in order to understand how to manipulate strings, okay? so. First one, it says write a class with the following static methods. Now, I didn't create these perfectly. I didn't return information. I just displayed the information at the end. So, um, again, I didn't. I, I just want to be able to show you how to do these things because you can use each of these techniques in the different string programs. All right. So, word count. This method should accept a reference to a string object as an argument and return the number of words contained in the object all right so so I called this a <clears throat> main string tester and string tester so I create me up my object main uh, my string tester um, and then I, I assign test string to um, and I just use their information you could change this up I just the dog jumped over the fence um, so I put that in there and then I pass the string object to word counter. So word counter accepts it. So um, here's the code for this, but I'm also going to upload this uh, file right here. Um, and as a matter of fact, I don't want to do word wrap. I want it to be like that. I am going to have all the different, um, you know, how each step occurs. Um, with this code now the only one now I you know maybe I should should uh, go back and, and make this most frequent uh, letter counter um, the string smaller so I don't have to I basically quit after four steps because this would have been hundreds of lines of steps that we were going to go through and you'll see why but um, again for each of these except for one of them because one of them is really easy I did each step um, and you'll you'll probably want to see what each line does at each different step, okay? So if we put our code up here, let's see here. Um, and I can pull this down a little bit. So um, we've got test string that got passed in, and then I've got count is one. So you know our test string has at least one word in it now you know maybe I could do this too at the end say if um, if let's see here if test string dot um, length is less than one meaning that there's no character if somebody put a blank in then I would just assign count equal to zero and so they would display zero but that was the only thing I can think of that uh, all right so index of so the way that you would count the number of words in a sentence is you would want to check for a blank space so there's one two three four five six uh, words um, six words in um, this sentence the dog jumped over the fence okay and so we're the index of what the index of so count is initially one while and then I've got test string dot index of what it does is it looks for the blank space and then it returns the first instance of it well the first instance of it is right here so that's index position three in our string so that would return so this whole thing right here would return three now if it doesn't find a string it would return negative one so we want to make we want to see if it's not equal to negative one then get inside the while loop and then you'd have a count because what it does is it looks for this and it goes up oh, there's the first one and then it would add one to count and so um, 
it would know that you have you know at least two words in there so then what we do is this right here so what is this return so uh, substring there's two types of substrings there's a substring that you only pass in one parameter so in this case the parameter is four and how do we get that we do again the index of um, we do this index of where it's at blank and it finds it at position three so it puts three down and then we add one to it so that would give us four so what this does is this takes from position four all the way to the end and it assigns it to the test string okay and then we go back to we go back to the loop and count as two while and then um, you know now we're looking at this uh, sorry now we're looking at this test string as opposed to this one so notice we we're, we're rebuilding this test string with one less word each time so that we can count each word so the word the is no longer in this test string so it's looking for the next blank spot in this test string so the next blank spots in position three so um, three is not equal to negative one so we add one to count and now what we do is we we do the same thing as before our test string at blank is at is at position three so we do position three plus one which gives us right here jump all the way to the end okay so substring will take it from if there's only one um, if there's only one uh, parameter, meaning that's not like that comma six, that would be two parameters, all right? And we'll see a substring that has two parameters in it later, but that would be four. So what's, um, you know, so this is our string. So what's that position four? It's jumped over the fence. And so that's where I have jumped over a fence. So that's my new string that gets passed in the test string. And now we've chopped off the word the and the word dog. And we have now um, two different words, okay? Or really three. So next up. <clears throat> Um, what do we do here? So we, we're, we're looking at this and where, and so then we go back up to our while loop. It gets popped back up to our while loop. We then check to see where the next blank space is. The next blank space is position six. So is six not equal to negative one? Yep, so add one, we get four. And then we've got the test string at six plus seven so we have uh, six plus one is seven so we're at position seven to the end of the string so now we chopped off jumped and the space and we've got over the fence so that's our new test string that gets passed back up to the while loop uh, do we find another blank space yep it's at position four so while four is not equal to one then we add another one to count and this is our new test string again so where does it find the index of? It finds it at position four plus one, and that is now reassigned into test string, and so the fence is our new test string. Um, we go back up to the while loop, and we check to see, uh, is there a blank space again? Yes, it's at position three, so three is not equal to negative one. We add another one, that's six uh, uh, words that we've counted, and then now, um, in this string, we check to see, uh, you know, um, where's the blank spots at position three, we add one to it. And now we have fence. So fence gets assigned into here. Um, and so test string now is fence. And so then we go back up into the while loop and is there a blank spot anywhere in fence? There's not. So it returns negative one and negative one is not equal to negative one that's false so your while loop is done and um, you know if it prints here let's see what it prints uh, count plus the count let's see this is gonna be small but count is six and we have one two three four five six there okay 
So um, this program does a really good job demonstrating while loops, the index of uh, method, which again, you could put any string you want and what it would do is it would find the first occurrence of it. Now you could do other things too, like let's say you wanted to uh, I th count the number of words the in there. I think that would probably work in here. I'd feel kind of stupid if... Uh, oh, I'd have to change all these, so uh, let's see if that helps. So there's three of them. So I would have to change that up um, because it automatically added one and then it found the second and then the third one. So um, if I wanted to do an individual word, I'd probably have to change this count right here to zero and then see if it exists and then it would add one to it and so on and so forth. So that's the word count. All right, next up is the array to string this method accepts a char array as an argument and converts to a string okay this is the one I don't need to go through as much so here's my here's my string it's the same thing as up here only I put them in single quotes to make them characters and I create this char array um, and so I've got commas in between each of the words and 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 uh, it's not words in between each character each letter and um, blanks are considered characters too so so with this one uh, I just set this char array to string so it's going to be I'm changing my character array to a string so that's where I got that from um, I pass in my char array and then so what I do is I run through the length of my character array so we start at zero is zero less than the number you know I don't know how many are in here um, what would there be one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirty forty fifty six seven eight nine twenty five six seven twenty eight twenty nine so there's the length is twenty nine so zero through twenty eight and so that's twenty nine the length um, and all we do is we say, hey, whatever character position at zero is, add that in to the character rate of sentence. So, and then it, we print the sentence. So, character rate of sentence, the dog jumped over the fence. So, this is just one showing you how to run through, you know, an array basically and, and convert it into a string. Um, Next one, this one's actually pretty difficult too. And I did, like I said, the first first few steps and then I was like, well, this is gonna take way too long. But um, what we do is we got most frequent zero, count is one, index is zero. Um, and then we got I, cause we're getting to our for loop. I is less than the, the length, which is 29. Um, and then we've got, um, this right here, we go into this. So this ends this, this first loop. Then we go into here and we got I is zero, zero plus one is one. And then we do X is less than 29. Um, and then we do, let's see here. Then we got this if statement. We check to see what's that character position zero. Um, that's the word T because the first word is what, the? You go over here, the dog. Okay, the dog jumped over the fence. So what's that position zero? It's T. So this demonstrates the character at. So what the character at, at position zero, it returns a T here. So that's why I have a T. And is T not equal to, so I check to see if it's not equal to blanks because um, in this case, uh, the word, because we're, we're counting the, the letters that are used the most. So that's E is gonna be it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
one, two, three, four. So there's five blanks, but you could use words where there's more blanks than any character. So I don't, I don't think that's, I, I just put that in there because I don't want to test that. So if they're not equal to blank and, um, um, so look at X, X is one, right? Cause I is zero, zero plus one is one. So what we're doing is we're comparing T to H right here. Are they, are, are they equal? And is T equal to H? No, so we don't count that up. But the way this would work is that, and again, I, I did just the first few, um, you know, T is not equal to H, so then it skips that. We add one to X, and X becomes two. And that's where I've got X becomes two. Is two less than 29? Yes. So um, again, is that T equal to blank? No, it's not. And then is T then equal to E? So then you you know you 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 stay on here. That's where this um, that's where this uh, right there, I, I stays at zero while everything's going to get run inside the inner loop. So is T equal to H? No. Is T equal to E? No. Is T equal to blank? Is T equal to D? T equal to O, G? So I have to come all the way over to here. Is T equal to T right here? Yes, that would be equal. And so then we would count one. And um, then we would, you know, and then is there any more where T is being, so you got T there. There's no more T's in here. So what would happen then is count would be two. We would run through the rest of this and we would then hit where X is 29, is 29 less than 29, 29 no. And then we would say count initially was one. So is the new count, which is two, and the most frequent zero is the new count that's two greater than the most count yes it is because most count is zero so the new most count is two um, and then the index position where that value is is zero right because again I is zero initially so um, and th this is getting you to return the one that's used the most and what that character is. And to know what the character is, you have to know the index position. So that index position is zero, okay? Now we reassign count to one because what we'll do is we're gonna have to then go through this again and then I will be, well, so uh, count would be one and then we go back up to this for loop, the, the outer for loop, and now we add one to, to i, and i would become one. So then we've got one plus one is two for x. And so what you're doing now is you're taking the outer loop i, which is one right here, and it's h, and now we gotta compare it to what's at position two in the inner loop for e, and then the blank, and then the d, and then the o, and then all of them. So h is found one, two spots again. So uh, count would be count would be two. Is two greater than the most frequent two? The most frequent two was t before. So is two greater than two? No. So then you're done with that. You're done with your, 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 uh, uh, position one and now you go on to I becomes two so now you're looking at what's in position two and then t I becomes two right here two plus one is three so now you're comparing E to blank and then E to D and E to O G and so anyway count would be one right here but then it would get here it'd be count is two and then three, and then four, and then five, and then six. So six would be greater than the most frequent one, which was T, which was two. So the most frequent is now six, and the index position is I, so that's index position two. And so you basically run through where you're, you're comparing where you're at 
and then to all of the rest of them and then you go to the next letter and then you compare it to the rest of the string and then you go to the next letter and you do this over and over again you can see why I didn't do every single step because you would there'd be hundreds of steps now what I probably should have done is just shrank this down and, and just put a, a smaller word and just one word in there like um, I know teen the E would still be the number one use uh, character in there and it would come up twice, but then I could have written everything out. But what, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, by the end, then what happens is the most frequent is six and the character is at position index, which, you know, was, remember what I said, three right here. So let's run this and you've got most frequent is six and the character is six okay all right last one on here in replace so this one it says this method accepts three references to objects as arguments let's call them string one two and three it searches string one for all occurrences of string two when it finds an occurrence of string two it replaces it with string three for example suppose the three arguments have the following values so this is where string one is the dog jumped over the fence we want to find the word the and replace it with t so it'd be that dog jumped over that fence all right so um so what i did is i've got the test string the dog jumped over the fence the old string is the and the new string is going to be that so i i don't want to mess with the original string so what i do is i create a new t string and just assign it to test string and then I say the new test string is blank. Um, let me think here. I'm going to show you why I do that here in a second. Let's look at this um, and show you how I set this up. I can go down a little bit. I got some more room here. All right, so we've got T string is the dog jumped over the fence, old strings the, new strings that. You know, maybe I do that because then I can see where my index positions are. So what do I do here? I assigned, why did I come up with this? So I got T string is equal to the dog jumped over the fence. I got a new string equal to blank. I then got a while loop will a while the T string, which is this dot index of the old string. So I want to. So this is really looking for the word the. Okay, and um, does it find the word the? Yeah, it does at position zero. Okay, um, finds the first occurrence of the word the at position zero. Is it greater than or equal to zero? Yes. So that's good. So then we go into this one. And so right here, what's at substring zero to zero? Well, at substring, so at, at substring zero to zero, now this is hard for kids. Um, if you have two parameters in your substring, you start at whatever index position is. So it'd be zero right here. And, um, in this case if it really this one is whatever number minus one and that's really hard for kids to understand and so since there's nothing at negative one here it just returns a blank now if I were to do zero to one zero to one is really one minus one which is zero so it gives us one right here again that's super confusing okay so uh, like for instance um, you know, 0 to 17 is really 0 to 16, okay? Now, this is going to be different than what I just demonstrated, but so if I did 0 to 5, 0 to 5 is really 0 to 4. That's what's returned with 0 to 5. It's T-H-E space D, okay? 
So again, this is what, you know, this is something that you have to memorize that if there's two parameters, that second parameter, you really got to think about it as whatever number they have in there, minus one, and then that's what you'd pull out of your string, okay? So anyway, zero to zero, there's nothing in that negative one, so it's just blank. Uh, so, and the reason for that is we want to start our new string, and we want to add blank plus that, okay? So it would just return that. So that's our new string that we're building. So that's the, the first, you know, uh, that's that right there. That's our new string, okay? Because remember, we want to we want to get you don't really get rid of the the word the in um, in the original um, test string. You you basically what you do is you kind of just skip it and, and kind of rearrange it. It'd almost be like if if you wrote a bunch of words on a piece of paper and cut up each word and then formatted the the words on the paper to to what you wanted it to look like that's kind of what's going on here um so we got our new test string that starts with the word that and then what we do is we say that our our t string um is going to start at index position zero plus three, right? Because the old string is the, the, and its length is three, right? So the one, two, three. So what we do is we say um, our, our substring is going to be zero to uh, uh, zero plus um three and that gives us three so what we're doing is we're rebuilding this new t string so we basically skip uh the word the so now i've got what's at index position three it's blank dog jumped over the fence okay so that's in position three we skip the word the and now we've got that string and that's our new t string so T string is this now, okay? And our, you know, again, our new string is that. So this gets done, we go back up and we look at T string. Is there the word the in this string right here? Yep, it's in position uh, 17, that's where it starts. So while there's an index, uh, we find the index of the, which is in here at 17. Is 17 greater than or equal to zero? Yes, it is. Um, just a second, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Okay, so then what we do, remember new test string was that originally, um, and then we want to go to the um, starting at zero, which is um, here, to where the word the starts, which is 17. So we go over to 17, and remember, it's really 17 minus one. So what, what this line of code right here is going to find, uh, it's going to find the word the, zero to the word the, and it's going to strip out that right there. So we have then, it, it comes up, we've got that and then space dog jumped over. So that dog jumped over is now the new test string, okay? And so we have that jo dog jumped over right here in this line right here. There's our new test, or our old one was uh, that dog jumped over, and then we want to add in the new string. So we have the word that. So it becomes that dog jumped over that. 
Okay, so our new test string comes out to be that, and I label it uh, that dog jumped over that right there. Okay, and then what do I do? Uh, sorry, I moved this down because it was all kind of getting in the way. But then we do we we still have our test string where we want to start. You know, remember we've basically taken that dog jumped over that right here you know, turn it into that, but then we still have this extra piece right here that we want to add back in, okay? So what we do is we say, uh, find the index of um, the old string, which again, T string hasn't changed, T string is still this, so it finds it at, um, uh, let's see here. 17 right there so the word the starts starts right there so that's 17 so that's the old string and then the old strings length is 3 so um, 17 plus 1 uh, sorry 1 2 and then 3 we start at 20 so 17 plus 3 gives us 20 so uh, index position 20 is blank fence so we've got substring you know fence right there that gets stored into T string which is right here fence and that gets stored into here now does it find so so T string is is dash fence so our new string that do, is still that dog jumped over that so we have to be able to add in fence at the very end but we still have to run through our last while loop does it find the word the in um, our t string fence it doesn't it returns negative one so our while loop gets done and then all we do is take our new string which is that dog jumped over that and we add in the last piece fence to the end of it and uh, then we're done okay so um, that dog jumped over that fence all right so um, I would and I think what I'll do is I am going to put I'm gonna copy this into here at the bottom and I'm gonna copy the main now again you could change this up a little bit because it's not perfect to wh what the requirements are but um, uh, let's see here That's the uh, code for this whole thing. So if you guys want to play with this, um, I would get familiar with the index of index of dot length dot char at um, and the, the substring. So um, this video is done, but I'm going to upload. I'm going to save this and upload this to. I'm going to upload the video and um, this worksheet into right here. So. Uh, anyway, yeah, this video is done.